All right, so I'm going to stick the key in this hunk of crap and check it out. Look, nothing. Uh, that window over there will work. So I know I have power, but uh, obviously uh, we'll kind of go over the steps on what you need to do to figure that out. Some, you know, if something's wrong with your car. Um, step number one would be to go ahead and look at your switch and make sure the switch isn't broken itself to make sure that it's actually, you know, functioning like it should, you know, it clicks and everything feels tight and stuff like that in it still. Um, step two would be to go and check for power. You know, if all your windows didn't work to go check for power and normally your windows are going to be controlled by a fuse and a relay. <coughs> so the first thing you're going to look at is the fuses and normally uh, for windows, it's normally the fuse box that's inside the car uh, and this car, it's down there in the kick panel right there. Um, let's see, get a flashlight so you can see it right there and usually on that cover it'll tell you um, you'll be looking for something that says like power locks or something like that so what you can do is you can pull the fuse out and see if it's any good and if it's still good you can actually test it for power so if you want to test it for power you can use like a multimeter and set it on voltage and test it to make sure that fuse has power sometimes fuses don't have power or you can use like a test light like I have here this is actually a computer safe test light okay it won't pop airbags and it won't cook computers all right, so this is one of my favorite tools right here is one of these computer safe uh, test lights. And you just stick it on the fuse and see if it has power when you have the key turned to the, you know, the on position. Just like if you're going to roll the windows down. So sometimes those fuses won't have power. And uh, if your fuses don't have power, you're going to go need to look at your battery and uh, check your battery out. And sometimes there's a fuse up there that might be popped that won't power the fuse box in here. So you need to look at that. And those are usually called fusible links and those are usually up by the battery. All right, battery terminals look good. Wiring goes this way, some of it goes that way. What powers the fuse box goes down and around this way and it powers everything underneath the fuse box through this stud here. So let me get your meter, let's turn on voltage. You can test here, let's see if we got voltage, it's good. Okay, and test here, that's good. So our connections here are good. This is actually the fusible link I was talking about here and actually what it does, it burns in here and you can't see it. So the only way to test it is actually to test it here, okay? And it is good. Again, you can go over here and start testing all these. Everything's labeled. Fuse box cover. Uh, your relay is here. When you find the right relay, you can just swap it around. Um, there you go there. So, uh, if you have a good fusible link and you got a good uh, fuse in your fuse box here, um, you can go check the relay out. So with the relays, you just end up finding the door lock relay and uh, you can yank it out and actually swap it with something else. Just look for something else that looks the same, like the horn, turn signals or something like that, and just swap the relay and see if, uh, see if you get your power windows back. Now, if that doesn't work, you can go straight to the door panel like I'm about to do here, because I know I have power and everything like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the door panel off and I'm gonna look at the wiring from the switch to the motor you have in the door. All right, so the next the next thing you're going to look at is you're going to want to look at the wiring at the switch. Make sure it's all there, it's not broken. So this, this truck's kind of old, so it could have broken wiring. A lot of your newer cars are not going to have broken wiring unless you think the door has been worked on on a body shop. The wiring could be broke here down in the boot, okay, since they did some work to the body or it's been in a car accident or something like that. So you got to be aware of that and see if you have any um, turn bolts or anything like that that indicates that this thing's been in the body shop and something the wiring might be cut or damaged in some way so this one looks good it's never been worked on it's just really old and the wiring is all here and I pretty much know the wiring works because the un other windows kind of move okay so my next step would be to actually follow some of the wire into the door and be looking for the door uh, the window motor and it's actually located you know inside the door right there it's down in here so let me get a flash of that real quick Okay, so your window motor on this car is going to be okay, right down here. It's this black thing right here. And uh, this cable you have here and this piece right here and the cable you have there, it's considered the regulator. And the regulator, what it does is it actually holds onto the window and it's what moves the window up and down, okay? Or it tracks the window, okay? The motor actually moves the window, but the motor moves uh, the regulator, which regulates the movement of the glass, I guess you can say. But here's the wiring for it. What we're going to do is we're just going to test the wiring. This is the easiest thing to do to see if this wire is getting power um, to command the motor to move. And if it's getting uh, if it's getting power to move, uh, that more than likely means that the motor down there has either been burnt up or it's wet, corroded, damaged, or something like that. So now you can use 
Um, so you can actually see that someone's been in here and possibly replaced the motor before because there's some crimps. Those crimps could be corroded. Um, they could be falling apart. They actually look really good. So that's probably not the case here. And there's no corrosion really on this guy. So it's probably okay. We have to go over how the power works before we test it here. So a window motor is just two wires, okay? And uh, basically what happens is when you move, let's say we want to move the window up, okay? We hit the up button. One wire is going to be ground and the other wire is going to get signaled with power. It's going to be, power is going to turn on here and that will move the window up. Okay, let's say that um, green is ground and then yellow, click the switch, gets power and that's what moves the window up. Now if we want to move the window down, we press down on the switch. This actually gets reversed, okay? And the yellow be ground and then the green will be positive and that's what pulls the window down. It just basically reverses it so the motor moves one way or the other way. So when we're testing this, we're just looking for that, okay? We're gonna use either the multimeter or we're gonna use a test light and see when we pull the switch up, see if this wire gives me positive when I do that and see if this one gives me negative when I do that and vice versa. If I press down, see if it switches. If that happens, that means that motor is probably bad or the connection's bad down there somewhere. And we can keep testing all the way up to the motor to find out if the connection is bad. So with this computer safe test light, it actually plugs in with a cigarette lighter and power does go into it, but it doesn't produce any power. That's what makes it safe. And what it'll actually do is actually show me positive and negative right here on here. It actually shows me three things. Positive with a green light, negative with uh, a red light, and then it'll show me nothing, and that means nothing at all, okay? So there's three things, negative, positive, and nothing, okay? Yeah, you can't get an adapter for this, where it'll give you alligator clips if you want to use it under the hood or something. Or cigarette lighter, plug it in, turn the key forward, power this guy up, and uh, I like this, I really like this one. Not all of them have this because it has this white light here that, uh, you know, it allows you to see down in the, you know, the dark, you know, corners and everything like that. But it actually shows me that that cigarette lighter is working, okay? I'm gonna stab the yellow wire. This guy's nice and sharp, so it's pretty easy to stab. You can see here that it's giving me the ground signal here. Go to the green, ground signal also. That's, this is a real good indication that um, we have a connection and we are talking to the car that we don't have a split wire in the door or anything like that. So while I'm holding this green one on the wire, I'm gonna go to the switch here and I'm gonna try to command the window to roll down, okay? And if you look, I'm getting the red, that means I'm getting power to the down. The green one is the down wire, okay? So it's telling the motor, I wanna go down, nothing's happening. So if I go to this yellow one and go up, should do the same thing, and it is. So I got red right there. Um, so that means that this switch works. That means the wiring is good, getting power all the way through the connector. Our problem is further down. Either it's these crimps or it's this motor. More than likely, it's the motor. Okay. All right. So you got the you got a multimeter too, which really good tool. Tesla's super easy. But um, I'm gonna set it on voltage. Get your black lead. Stick it on ground somewhere and get your red lead and stab the wire over here. This gets tricky because gotta hold a let's see if I can do this. Gotta hold a meter right here. Position this fucking there you go. Some ground groundage. Alright. And then I'll go to the yellow, which is the up wire. Okay. Right now it's not showing me anything, but if I press up, 12 volts, that's the signal to go up. All right, so the green one is the down one. It should be the same thing if I want to command down, 12 volts. Cool, so fuse is good, relay is good, switch is good, wire is good. More than likely we got a bad motor, okay? And that's two ways of testing this. You can use something called a power probe too to test this also, which is something completely different. Um, it's a really, really good tool. It's kind of like this. It does exactly what this does and that does all in one. And it will provide an output for voltage and ground. So it's a good tool, but you need to know how to use this and this first before you even get to that. Um, I want to do a video on it, but uh, maybe later on. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. Just
All right, guys, well, that's pretty much it for this video. Real quick and easy on uh, how to test your wiring to figure out why your, your window's not going up and down. Uh, in the next video, I'll go ahead and replace the whole regulator and motor. Um, it won't be too bad. It's pretty pretty simple with this, with this guy here. I hope the video was uh, helpful, and if it was, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. So if you want to see more, uh, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and uh, yeah, you guys take care, be safe, and have a great weekend later.